So we started our optimization project and it hasn't gone perfect. We're gonna fix some things and make sure we're all understanding what's going on. So that's what we're gonna do here. All right, so on the front side, you found all of your measurements. For this problem right now, I'm gonna act like I'm doing uh, a box. All right, and so for me right now, length times width times height, that is how I would find the volume. Let's just say that my volume was 100 to make life easy. Okay, let's say my original one was five and two and 10. Those are my three sides. Let's say I had a box that's five by two by 10. I got a volume of 100. All right, so reading the backside. Our job is to decide, is this the cheapest container to manufacture our product? Okay, we are going to keep the same basic shape and we are gonna to try to minimize surface area while holding the same volume of our product. All right, so this is an optimization question. How do you know it's an optimization question? We're minimizing something. And so underneath where it says max or min equation, our primary equation, we're going to write what we're trying to maximize or minimize, which in this case is surface area. Okay, so you're gonna write down your surface area equation, whatever it is, if you have a cylinder, great. This one's a box. So for a box, the surface area is two times length times width plus two times length times height plus two times width times height. It's an annoying equation, but that is my equation for surface area. When we do this, if you have a box, you are gonna assume that one of these shape, one of these sides stays the same. Because otherwise, you have three variables and we can't deal with three variables. Okay, so we're only gonna switch two of them. And so whatever one I came around and told you, that's the one you're gonna keep the same. Okay, so for mine, I'm gonna keep the width the same and it was five. So I'm gonna rewrite this surface area equation and I'm gonna plug in five for W. So two times five, this is gonna be 10 L and two L H and then two times five. So 10 H. We wrote our surface area equation. If you have a cylinder, you're not plugging in anything. You're just leaving your same equation because you already have two variables. What's the problem? This is what I'm trying to maximize or in this case, minimize. What's the problem with minimizing this equation? How many variables do I have? I have two variables. I have L and H. That's a problem. I can't have two variables. So I need to have a second equation to substitute in. So now that's where the volume equation comes in. If I'm dealing with a box, my volume equals length times width times height. My job is to keep the volume the same. So if I'm keeping the volume the same, what should my volume be? whatever it is on the front side. So for me, it's 100. And then I'm also going to keep whatever side we said was the same, the same. So I'm plugging in a five for W here. Nothing else gets plugged in. If you have a cylinder, you don't plug anything in because you only have two variables. You're just gonna plug in your volume and not the, the R or the H. Now what can I do with this new equation? Solve for a variable. Which variable do we wanna solve for? H it is, divide by 5L, divide by 5L. So for me, it's a very simple 20 over L equals H. Once I've done this, what am I gonna do with that? Plug it in. Everywhere I have an H, I'm gonna plug in 20 over L. So it's 10L plus 2L times 20 over L plus 10 times 20 over L and then, all right, cool. Now my equation's in terms of one variable. I'm going to simplify it. Here the L's are gonna cancel, so it's gonna be plus 40. And then that's gonna be plus 200 L to the negative one. I simplified it. Now that it's in terms of one equation, now what can I do with it? If I wanna minimize or maximize it, it's in terms of one, one variable, now what can I do? Find the derivative, set it equal to zero and solve. That's what you gotta do. Keep working from there. Everybody somewhat on the same page. All right, so we set that thing up. Now we are going to take the derivative. We have the surface area as one variable, so now we are taking the derivative. Um, so 10L is gonna become 10, 40 goes away. 
20L to the negative 1. Multiply by that, so it's going to become negative 20. And then it's going to be L to the negative 2, because I'm adding subtracting 1. That's my derivative. I'm going to set it equal to 0 and solve. In this case, then, I'm going to continue to solve this thing. So I'm going to subtract 10. And then I got to think about this right here, this L to the negative 2. Remember what L to the negative 2 means? L to the negative 2 means it's L squared on bottom. So if I put my L squared on bottom, I want to solve that. The next thing I'm going to do is get rid of that L squared. So I'm going to multiply both sides by L squared. I get negative 20 equals negative 10 L squared. Divide by negative 10, divide by negative 10. Boom. That gets me 2 is L squared. So 2 is L squared, then L is going to be equal to radical 2. Stop. I'm an idiot. I did this wrong. 20 times 10 is 200. Oh, no. Oh, no. Act like I was good at math. Act like I was good at math. I'm going back. Boom. Okay, cool. It's 20 equals L squared. That's way more sense because otherwise I was in trouble. Sorry, guys. All the math I was doing correct, except for, you know, that whole uh, solving thing. Now we're going to get rid of the L squared. So then I'm going to take the square root. L equals the square root of 20. And so in my calculator, I could figure out what the square root of 20 is. I'm just going to leave it, to be perfectly honest. If I know what my L is, I know what my width is because I kept my width the same. My width was 5. The only other thing I have left to do is to solve for height. And the best way to solve for height is to plug back in to this volume equation because I know what it should be equal to. So that means I'm left with this problem. 100 equals 5. I know what my length is now, square root of 20 times height. So I would take 100 divided by 5. That would get me 20. And then I'm going to divide by square root of 20, divide by square root of 20. Take that in your calculator. You will find out that h is also the square root of 20. This should be pretty common as you solve it when you find your length and your height or whatever things you solve for, they should be pretty similar numbers. At that point, you've done all the work. Now you're just verifying what's going on. So you're going to find the volume. Well, we know what the volume is going to be. It should be what you started with. But check your new numbers and see if your volume is the same. Your surface area. Well, your surface area should be a minimum because that's the whole thing that we did. We found the surface area. So you're just plugging these three new numbers into my equation to find my new surface area, and it should be a minimum. Hope that clears some things up and working the right way, taking derivatives. It's good practice. I wish you could do it on your own, but I know sometimes you need some help, so I hope that helps you. Thanks, guys.